Britain. We're going to do some uh, work on this. Yeah. Um, and so uh, if Getchen could get the first uh, loop video set up. So we've got a series of five relatively short videos here, and we're going to have a, a touch break and maybe have a talking heads or field questions um, uh, when we're doing them. So whenever you're ready, start the first video, Getchen, please, uh, 3A. Um, and if you have a question related to the video, flag up your hand while the video is going on and we'll pick that up uh, between the videos. So uh, straight to the video, please. Formation is loop formation, but more importantly, loop resolution. I think most trainees are very aware they're forming a loop because you have the following signs. What do you feel? What do you... Um, you can feel it's becoming more uncomfortable and your handling of the scope. Yeah. Um, and you're getting less effective talk and the patient's often more uncomfortable as well. And you can see it's on the scope side. So when you say it's more uncomfortable talk, it's, there's more resistance. Yeah. So you get increased resistance, you get lack of progression, yeah. or you sometimes get a paradoxical movement. And as you rightly say, the patients become uncomfortable. So let's just think about the colonoscope, how it works, uh, and what these loops are gonna look like. So I've just laid it out on the bed to start with. And one of the reasons I've done that is because when the scope is straight, it's the easiest to handle. Mm -hmm. The torque's most effective, and importantly, the tip deflection that you use mm -hmm. is most sensitive. Mm -hmm. So as you bend the scope, this ability to move the tip diminishes. So I just want you to hold the scope mm. for me. I appreciate you're standing on the mm. wrong side. Just use the angulation wheels. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of loops in the scope. Just try the angulation wheels again. Yeah, a lot more resistance. A lot of resistance. Yeah. And can you get as much deflection? Probably not. Not no, really. No. no, it's really creaking, yeah. isn't it? There. Yeah. So there's a good reason for keeping the scope straight. So we want to straighten the scope as, as soon as we possibly can. Now, with the instrument straight, interestingly, it will insert very nicely. Yeah. And yeah. it stays straight and we keep going and we keep going and we keep going. Yeah. Well, we know the colon's not like that. No. It comes across a resistance. And the resistance is usually a bend and a fold. And you catch the tip on the fold and this happens. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So you get a simple loop forming. How are we going to take that loop out? Um, so you could pull back. We could pull back. How far do we pull back? Uh, a little, as far as you need, I suppose. But a little bit. You don't want to fall out, do you? Oh. Well, we don't want to fall out. Yes. Well, that's a little bit. Oh, that's reformed again. Yeah. So we want to pull a little bit more. Yeah. So little is not a great description, is it, really? No. We want to pull back until the scope is... Straight. How do we know it's straight? Um, you, you might be able to feel it in your handling of the... You scope. might. What's more likely to happen? Watch, watch what happens to the tip as I pull back. It doesn't move, does it? No. And when it's straight, what happens? Then it starts to move back, so you'll be right. pulling so you're gonna, out. You're yeah. going to pull it back till it's straight. How do you know it's straight? Because when you withdraw the yeah. instrument, you're withdrawing it one-to-one, -one, yes. and we're back okay. to being straight. Yeah. So... What stops it from reforming when you've got it straight? Because that's what you see them doing. You pull it straight and then you seem to go reform forward again. It, yeah. so, so what prevents it from reforming? Um, so I guess if you go in a different angle or do a different approach. Right, so let's think about what caused the problem in the first place. Yeah. So there's a fold here. So yeah. we might just actually move the tip so we haven't yeah. got resistance. And this time... Go around. You go yeah. around. Yeah. So, you, so you pull back straight and we change something to enable the scope to, to remain straight. Yeah. yeah. But we all know that there are lots of folds in the bowel and eventually you will get a loop forming. Yep. And then once the loop's formed, it has the potential to rotate in three dimensions and form what we call a classical loop. So concepts, keep everything straight. Once it's straight, you can reinsert. Yep. And the other thing about keeping it straight is the rate at which you insert the instrument. So think of this colonoscope of a, a thin piece of string on a highly polished wooden table. If it's nice and straight, it will remain straight. Yeah. If you try to push in too quickly, it will often buckle and you'll stop going forward. Yeah. So it's not just keeping the scope straight, but it's also the rate at which you push in becomes important. Now, let's assume you have formed a loop. And I've got a loop inside mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. See that? Let me just take that out of the way. So, in terms of loop resolution, mm. there are really only two things, two major actions you can do to resolve the loop. The first one we've just covered, which was? Pulling out. Pulling out. And yeah. the other one is? <coughs> Untwisting the loop. 
applying torque, yeah. which effectively untwists the loop. Yes, you're quite right. Or resolves the loop, shall we say. So yeah. you've pushed the loop in, and we're not going forward, and the patient's in unco uncomfortable. Mm. And you can either do pull back, yeah. or you can torque, yeah. or you can do them both together. Yeah. So just tell me what happens when you torque the instrument. Uh, so it's either going to make the loop worse, or it may be able to resolve the loop. Right. So as point. the as the patient, yeah, this is stretching my mesentery, yeah, and I'm uncomfortable, and you're doing making it worse. Probably. You're tweaking the yeah. mesentery a little bit. Yeah. You're making it worse. So yeah. probably torque, not it's great. Not work. You yeah. want to make me comfortable first. Yeah. How are you going to do that? You're going to pull it back. Pull that, yeah. Make it smaller then. Yeah. You're going to make it smaller. So the question is, how far back do you pull it? Until they're more comfortable. So, then... so trust me, I'm comfortable. Okay. So but that's pulling. not... Yeah, yeah, but you keep pulling. Till when? Don't know. Uh, well. So just, i tell you what, let's, let's practice. You usually only do it with your right hand, don't you? Yeah. So let that drop it down. I want you to close your eyes. Okay. Just pull the loop out, John. Do you really do it that quick? No. No. <laughs> Try pulling the loop out nice and slowly. And you want to feel with your finger, so hold it in the fingertips like you would normally do. And feel it. Feel it. Tell me what you start feeling. Yes. So it starts to twist in my fingers. So before it started to twist, yeah. before it started to twist, what did you feel? Pull back. The resistance. Resistance. Yeah. So before it starts to twist, you feel resistance. So as you make the loop smaller, yeah. you start to feel resistance. resistance. Okay. And yeah. that resistance is because the loop, internal loop, is really becoming quite small. And it's quite hard yeah. to pull it around yeah. on itself. And interestingly, when you, the loop gets this small, the patients often start to feel discomfort again. We're not really entirely sure why that is, but it's possible that you start constricting the vascular supply to the bowel at that point in time as well. So you mentioned two things. Firstly, you get resistance. And secondly, the scope starts to undo itself, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. It naturally rotates in the direction yes. it needs to go. Yeah. Okay? You don't do that, you don't feel that, unless you pull it back really slowly and you're feeling for it. Now, if you're not really sure which direction it is, you pull back till you get resistance, I'm now feeling comfortable. Yeah. If you pull back any far, further, I'm going to start to feel uncomfortable, so yeah. we stop. And then we're going to apply some torque. Now, it's clearly obvious this is a clockwise torque, but let's... Let's say you're not sure, and the first torque you're going to apply is anti-clockwise torque. Yep. So just, just start to apply some anti-clockwise torque. What do you feel, firstly? Uh, it's very hard. There's a lot of resistance. And, and I'm, as a trainer, I'm thinking, well, you need you to put more torque on. So okay. just apply some more torque. You're just not really putting enough on, John. I don't know who's been training you. <laughs> so so tell, me, tell me what's happening. So tell me what's happening as you're doing. limit to how far it can go. So, I've got to so the resistance point. is increasing. It's really difficult to apply the torque on. What's happening to the length of the instrument? Is shortening. Shortening. Yeah. So what happens is your hand comes forward. Yeah. And then if it shortens any further, you will come forward. Yeah. And your nose is getting closer to their anus. That's want, usually... Don't want that. We definitely don't want that. So we want to move the other way. So interestingly, if we apply the correct torque, the scope... Wants to move that way, doesn't it? It lengthens, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So it wants to move that way. Yeah, and, and it lengthens. Yeah. And to accommodate the lengthening, what are you doing with your right hand? Moving my right hand back. Back. Yeah. And often at the same time, what do you think happens at the tip? It moves forward. It moves forward. Right, yeah. right. So when you're putting the wrong torque on or the incorrect torque, it gets harder. Yeah. The scope shortens. Yeah. The tip sometimes will come back. Yeah. And you end up leaning forward. Yeah. And you change to a fist grip. So when I see my trainees doing this, mm. guess what? It's going the wrong way. It's the wrong tool. Yeah. I don't need a scope guy to tell me that. Yeah. The body position tells me that. When they've got the right torque, they tend to be doing this. And you lean back, and often the scope will go forward. Yes. Now, the question yeah. is, you put the right torque on, yeah. and you're still pulling back. And you have to do that because to straighten the scope, you have to lengthen it. Yeah. Okay? So you're going to pull back, and you're going to keep rotating and pulling back until when? Uh, until it starts getting harder to keep going that way. Well, until it's straight. Let's go. It's straight. Yeah. How do you know it's straight? Um, so again, in terms of movement forward and backwards. 
Right, it's yeah. back to the first yeah. thing we did, isn't it? Yeah. You nerd straight because when you start pulling back, you get one to one. Yeah. Now, often what happens is when you reinsert, you have a propensity to reform the loop. Yeah. Okay, and that does happen. Now, okay. we talked about how we might stop that from happening. What two things did we talk about? Uh, so we talked about trying to change something, so change the direction. Of the tip, so we might get rid tip. of the resistance, so we might change the angle of the tip, and you're yeah. going to push in? Uh, slower. Slower. Yeah. So they're the two things we can try. Now, with the best will in the world, we might have fantastic tip control and push in really slowly, but the loop still reforms, yeah. doesn't it? Right? Yeah. And what we do when that happens is we, we feel what torque is required to remove the loop. So in this case, it was clockwise torque to resolve yep. the loop, yes? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So when we reinsert, we go in slowly, and we move the tip, and we insert with uh, clockwise, clockwise torque. torque. Yeah. So we apply the torque on insertion that we did to remove the, remove loop, the loop, and okay. it prevents the loop from reforming. Okay. Now, what happens when you apply clockwise torque? Your tip moves. Yes. So you want to be going, if you think about it, we're here, yeah. and we want to be going up there. We're applying clockwise torque. Suddenly, we're going up here. Yeah. Guess what you have to do with your tip? Background. You have to yeah. realign it with your left wheel. So if we want to, if we're putting clockwise torque on, we want to bring it back to the left to go in the straight direction. Okay. So we call that facilitated torque steering. Yes. So you want to be going, if you think about it, we're here, yeah. and we want to be going up there, we're applying clockwise torque, suddenly we're going up here. Yeah. Guess what you have to do with your tip? Background. You have to yeah. realign it with your left wheel. So if we want to, if we're putting clockwise torque on, we want to bring it back to the left to go in the straight direction. Okay. So we call that facilitated torque steering. So we're going in and we're applying a little bit of torque. At the same time, we're correcting the wheel. Not only do we go forward, but we prevent the loop from forming. I'm going to change to a different sort of loop, which is possibly a little bit more difficult, but possibly a little bit more common. And that's this loop, which starts off in the sigmoid colon as an N loop. But in three dimensions, it's what we call an end spiral loop. So it starts like this, if you can think of it. Yeah. But often it's in three dimensions. OK. So to resolve the loop, what do you normally do? So you're going to hold the scope here. Yeah. We're going to resolve the loop. So again, we can do We're that. going to pull back. Yeah. Right. So in a straightforward two-dimensional end loop, yeah. that's exactly what you do. You pull back, you pull back, you pull back, you pull back, you pull back. And eventually, the loop comes in, the tip goes forward. So, um, Roland, just in terms of what we've seen in those loops, uh, I've just written some key points here. Would you agree? Would you disagree? What did you pick up from that? No, I, I completely uh, agree with that. I think um, going back to the question of um, scope guide or no scope guide and feel or not feel, I think very critically you've, um, your feeling in your fingertips is much better than in your hand grip. So uh, when you're resolving these loops, you really ought to be holding the scope with fingertips um, because you'll be feeling uh, the torque you need. Um, the other thing is really speed. And we'll be coming back to this uh, in the training. Uh, when we watch people almost universally, they go too fast. And I think going quickly uh, when everything's going well, it's absolutely fine. But when things are difficult, uh, you have to go slowly because you can't control the tip uh, as well. And as John illustrated, uh, pushing the scope in when it's straight quickly will often lead to looping um, or angulation. Whereas if you go very, very slowly, um, then you can prevent the angulation or the looping. So the speed is really important. And we'll be, I'm sure, telling the trainees later to slow down. Um, going slower... Uh, achieves a faster intubation. Yeah, and for the guys who are starting off or, or relatively uh, early in their colonoscope career, uh, we're talking here about something called facilitated torque steering. And I just want to dispel the myth that you use torque steering in the left colon and you use tip steering in the right colon. That's a myth. We use what we call facilitated torque steering through the whole of the colon. Now, it is correct that we use a lot of torque in the left colon, particularly in the sigmoid colon, because this rotational movement of the shaft of the instrument, which is what torque is, helps resolve the loops. There's no doubt that that is the case. But in addition to that, you've got to be able to control the tip. 
and you've got to maneuver the tip to maintain your luminal view and stop you crashing into the folds of the, of the mucosa, which add resistance, which cause the loops to reform. So we call this facilitated torque steering. So yes, we use a lot of torque in the left colon, but we also use the tip. And of course, as you negotiate around the colon, if you have straightened the loops out, you end up with this question mark shape. And the question mark shape means when you push in, you naturally go in one to one. And at that point in time, it's predominantly tip steer, but it isn't one or the other. We use them both together. Now, coming back to David's point, the speed becomes really important because if you're pushing the scope in, if you think about all the senses that you've got going on, you're looking at the screen, you're trying to maintain a luminal view, you're aware of the patient, and you also then have to use your left hand to manipulate the tip. That's a lot of things to do all at one go. And as you are early on in your training, you will struggle with that. And the way to make that easier is to simply slow everything down. It gives you more processing time to think about what you have to do. So can we uh, move to the final two videos? We can uh, just show them together. So we're going to deal firstly with very tight end loops, which is slightly different from what John was uh, showing a minute ago. And um, secondly, we're going to have briefly show how you move loops into the umbilicus. Video, please. But everyone watching the video will recognize this, where if you pull back, you go out, yeah. you push in, they get a lot of pain. Yeah. How do you think you're going to resolve that? Um, so if I pull back, yeah. I come back, and if I push in, yeah. I pause pain. If and if fatigue, anything, the angle oh, gets worse yeah, when I push yeah. in. Um, so do you have to change the tip of the scope? So I change the tip of the scope, it still happens. Still going to happen, yeah. So do you pull out, kind of want to pull out down or something? Pull out and down, down or something. Yeah. All right, yeah, so do you remember, we can only do two things. Yeah. We can either push in, yeah. or we can pull out, yeah. push in, pull out, or, or we, can, we can talk. Yeah. Now sometimes all that is required is talk. Okay. So we apply a little bit of talk here and it changes. The, can you see how the tip can drive forward? Yeah. We change yeah. the loop and we drive the tip forward. Okay. Now once we've got the tip to drive forward, we can then add a bit of withdrawal to that. Okay. So from this position, often the correct thing to do is to add a little bit of torque, correct with the tip, add a bit of torque, correct with the tip, and as the tip starts to move forward, you can then start withdrawing the instrument and you right. get back to a straight position.